Hello, welcome to TFLP Microcasters. I'm your host, Lucas, well, co-host, I guess. Um, and I'm here with Anna and Christian, the other co host Good evening. What's up? So, yeah. Uh, tonight we are doing uh, the new Hot Rod. I got it. So, fresh, fresh from Target <laughs> a week or so ago. Summer Mine's from? I don't even know. Yeah. Uh, I think that's the only one that's like where it showed up yet. I think I think it's just now Seven showing up at Walmart. Tonight. Oh yeah. well, there you go, showing up at Walmart now. I know the same thing with Grimlock. Like, um, there's a couple showed up at a couple Targets, but I've not been able to get it yet. And uh, supposedly some other people are finding Grimlock at Walmart's too. So, and then Walmart also has those Headmasters showing up too. If you're interested in that. I'm very interested in a lot of that stuff. My Walmarts have none of those things. See, it's all over our Walmarts, but I just don't really care that much. I don't know. Like, I just feel like I don't really have the room to display those, we, you know? We may have to have a, a chat after the show. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Get, go hunt for you again? Yeah. All my exclusives so. come from Kansas. But tonight we're here. <laughs> To talk about Studio Series Hot Rod. And he is cool. Yes. Here's the difference. Yeah. So let's start with car mode. I, I drew the short straw to get him into car mode. And that's actually, Lucas and I were talking about this before we went live with you guys, but this transformation has a lot going on, but it's not very complicated. Mm -mm. It's a really know, neat transformation. Sense. Yeah, it's really neat. It's fun. Like, every piece moves and everything goes into place, and it still looks this good in car mode and that good in bot mode. Like, it's cool. There he is from a top-down perspective. So, have you done the fix yet, quote-unquote? I, I did not do the fix, and I think the fix is addressing this tiny gap between the windshield and the rest of the car body. Is that correct? And, yeah, in the very front, I think it, like, yeah, it just doesn't fit quite right. got to say, I don't care. It looks, I mean, this is a toy. It's not a model kit or anything. It looks fine. Yeah. I, you know, whatever. You know what I realized does not look fine, and I'm going to shatter everyone's glass here. I was like, oh, man, he's got painted rims. But it's only the front ones. Yep. The back ones are not painted because they're obscured by the pipes. Which I guess I'm is fine, fine with but it it feels like maybe they should have painted the rims underneath. I felt the that's same a, that's a when I was thing. transforming it. I was like, why are they just black? Why do these have a little silver spot? <sighs> I'm fine with it. Good. The black ones are obscured, which is why they didn't do it. But I'm fine with them saving that nickel. I I may disassemble the pipes off and do it myself. If I had to pick between two silver wheels and zero silver wheels, I would definitely pick the two, the two hubcap you're, paints. You're right. But yeah, and here's the bottom view. I know a lot of people care about that. He cleans up really nicely. Yep. You know, a lot. You know, we see a lot of. Well, not lately, but we used to see a lot of, you know, robot bits just crammed under the car, and like you can see the legs here, but that also kind of looks like under carriage panels. So whatever. The RC just, mold still gives it to you if you want to have a robot crammed yeah. under. <laughs> you can have that. But like I mentioned before, with the intricate transformation, everything does have a place. Yep. Which is really cool. Some people have been complaining that the knees stick out the back of the mode. Again, I don't care. I don't. I, don't I mean, I, I think it's fine. Vehicle mode from the back. I just don't do it. It doesn't. It doesn't look I'm that sorry. bad. And and I think really that like huge ass, you know fin or whatever on the back kind of like obscures a lot of that stuff anyway so yeah. Um, yeah another important thing that i want to mention is that he's got this really great paint app on his chest his, that's his robot mode chest right there and he has enough clearance with the wheels that it does not scratch on the ground if you mm -hmm. want to wheel him around which is great no scratch paint no he rolls well i had him ramp some books on my desk and he was good at doing it so he works just fine i like the vehicle mode quite a bit like it looks like hot rod's supposed to you know it, it's probably not as i didn't go back and transform my mp hot rod to make sure it looks as good as that one it probably doesn't 
Um, and that's fine. You know, it's a I like that's... small step down from that. It's a step up from anything else we've had in generations for sure. I think the vehicle mode for the masterpiece actually looks pretty good. I think it's the robot mode yeah. that doesn't quite look as good. And I think the main part of that is with the backpack. You know, like this this one solves the backpack issue. Yeah, for sure. I do like this one more than Hoodlum. Yeah. So Christian, Hoodlum. you just showed off one of my favorite things is what? putting the guns in the saw in front of the car. It's so oh. stupid. I love it. Well, the guns always went up there. The saw is a new accessory. Right, the saw on top of it looks so stupid, and I love it. It's adorable. But yeah, you that. can put all those accessories on them. Look at that silliness. You know what I really want to put on them? And I'm, I guess, you know, no or somebody will make a part for this. But I pulled out my Siege Firebolt. Mm. It, doesn't, it doesn't go on. Mm. Yeah, he doesn't really have any 5mm ports, no right? No 5mm ports, yeah. Which, which is, is like that's a that's a thing with studio series you know they wanted to have you know clean vehicle modes which is what they've accomplished here yeah i was gonna say it's almost weird uh compared to uh earth rising kingdom where there's like a zillion of them yep yeah there's no um there's no ports for blast effects either other than the end of his tailpipes good yeah right. i know like, i, I love it that they're not there because they look gross Need that. I finally did find a blast effect piece that I liked, but we'll get to that. Oh, there was saying, done. the it the is. tail the tailpipe pieces like effects. I think I left those in the box. I don't know. I have to look. The guns actually have a port for blast effects, so you can still put the only fun blast effects on. Don't. Dude, it's <laughs> I, fun. I know I'm the only one who hates them so much, but no, yeah, you brought it. It's okay. So, so just to mention too about those blast effects is I guess some people are saying that it is actually breaking down the plastic and uh, figures or accessories or whatever. Like some people have had those siege blast effects on now for like a year, and it, and like what that rubberized plastic does, the plasticizer in it will break down plastic. And it's actually doing it. So I, I feel like that Christian is vindicated for his hatred of those blast effects. I really do feel vindicated by this. Yeah, you probably don't want to put them on long term. Who that happened to, but man. May just use them for a picture or something, then put it away, and you're all good. Yeah. Perhaps. But, yeah, I... I feel like in general with this hot rod is could like Takara just take this and scale it up just slightly, like maybe add a couple extra steps and call it the new masterpiece. Like, Sure. It's pretty close to being that. So like that car mode, I really like it. I think it's great. I think it's a little, it's a little bit of a bummer that there's parts in the front that don't go together super well. But honestly, when I put him on a shelf for a minute to try to see it, I wasn't noticing them too much. It was just when I was sticking my nose up at him to see things yeah, very specifically. You know, if it's you want pretty. To be that close, there it is. And it's funny because mine. I wish he was in karma right now because mine actually fits together better at that spot and much worse at the headlights because the two little parts that flip up and the front for the headlights, mine don't fit very flush at all. Like, and that I just pointed to the spot on my screen, which is ridiculous. But like my gap is, <laughs> my gap is bigger there than Christian's is. And my gap with the um, windshield is much smaller than his is. So it's going to vary, but you know, there is a fix for it that someone's come up with where you have to destroy your figure just a little teeny bit. So, you know, I wouldn't do it just because I don't know how long I'll keep this guy. But um, if you're planning to keep him for the long haul, probably not a bad idea. And then those, those leg parts sticking out the back are a little, you know, they're a little bit of an eyesore. But again, you're probably not going to look at it. So whatever. Yeah. Do you guys think the one. fin is a little bit too big? The spoiler fin thing? No, not I, at all. I don't think it's too big. I think in robot mode, it's a bit too high. Is that the thing? Okay. No, it's not. It's in the perfect position. See, this is the thing is, is like, it annoyed me with the, um, what is it? The Titans return. Um, it's very low on that one. It's very low on that one. And you, you couldn't see it. I feel like this is in the perfect position where I it, can actually it see does. it when I display my figure. It's just a little bit lower. 
it's but, a little bit of the angle yeah. though because like if you look at your That's screen right true. now i believe you'll see that mine you're seeing a little bit just like pretty much straight on on mine and lucas's you're seeing a little bit from underneath and yeah, are you were before like, he started moving yeah it. so i was gonna say this is kind of the position from underneath right it looks nice like that, but then when you're looking at it straight on like mine, it looks a little bit too high. So it's really just all about how you're going to display them. If you're displaying them where you're looking up at them a little bit, it's going to look great. If you're displaying them where you're looking head on or a little bit down, it's going to look a little too big or too high or whatever. It's not as big of a deal as I thought it was in pictures. In pictures, I thought, oh, God, that looks so stupid. It's like he's wearing a bib on his back. And then when I got it, I was like, whatever. I don't care. The rest of the toy is great. So Yeah, it's, it's very good. It's whatever. So that car mode is pretty good. Um, we were happy with it. And the transformation Christian already mentioned is painless. Like, I, I always use the instructions on anything that's more complicated than, like, a one-step just because I don't want to break it. And I also want to tell you how well the instructions work. Um, the instructions worked really well. Like, it was it was painless. It was very easy to do. Um, I put him back into his robot mode in just a couple minutes without any real stress. Um, but when I say just a couple minutes, it probably actually did take me, like, 10 just because, you know, the instructions laid out in 29 steps. That means that even though we wouldn't normally think of it as being a full 29 steps, when you do it with your hands, it's still a drawn out transformation in a good way. Like there's nothing yeah. bad about the drawn out. Like it's just like with it's the whole fun. telescoping cyclonus, yeah. it's fine. Like it takes a minute to do, but nothing about it makes you just stare at it and say, how the hell do I bend this thing and fold it? And oh, I'm bad. No, you don't get that. It took me between three and four minutes to go back to car mode from bot mode right before the show. It's it's a, there's a lot of stuff happening, but none of it is complex. And it, again, everything has a place, and you can easily tell where everything goes. Right. Yeah, it wasn't stressful, so that's really cool. You know, I, I like really that. If we can have the complicated studio series, we have both a car and a man that both look like they're supposed to. And it can actually be fun to do instead of torture that a lot of the movie series ones are. I am all for it. We'll make it hard. That's great. Are there any of the movie ones like a huge pain to do? I guess there's a few where it's just hard to get them in there like fitted together, I guess. Like I'm thinking like Jet Barricade and them. some of those ones or whatever. We talked about that Hellscape Beetle Bumblebee. When we reviewed a while back, right? That it thing was, was horrible. awful. <laughs> we Jet talked about it on the show a long time ago. Yeah, I didn't think that... Um, the Optimus is a bit of a pain in the ass, but he's not terrible. Yeah. It's just the thing is... Everybody's saying that the cop transformation is actually not as fun, but we'll see. <laughs> so the, I think the cop was fine. I don't have them yet. Don't even have cup. Yes. When I get them, I'll find out. I mean, I thought it was. I don't know. I didn't have that big a problem with it. We'll see. We'll see. That's I can't it. imagine cup being hard just because he's usually easy to transform. Like he's a simple thing. But hey, he might be. Like Coop was a pain in the ass. It's a little different. Before. So we'll see. Yeah, but like the the studio series bees are like messy. Right? Even though he's something that there's been a million toys of, they're still messy. And this guy is not. He's fun to transform. And, like, here's the thing with this guy. You know, something you may not notice while we have him on camera. And, Dana, you guys, I don't have a deluxe on my desk. But he is the height of an average deluxe figure. You know, this is a lot of transformation, a lot of parts packed into a small package. I, I think that that's the question you have to ask yourself about these figures, you know, right? Is, is this, uh, are, are we paying for size or are we paying for complexity and parts count and all that? And, and so uh, 
like, you know, that's where this figure is, is like definitely has the parts count of a Voyager and it does all the, you know, all the stuff right. And I think the other thing too is, is I know Anna always complains about the Narn articulated hands and gaps and things like that. Like this thing doesn't really have any gaps. Like it does the perfect backpack and all that. So like, that's what, I mean, that's the question you kind of have to ask yourself. Like, especially now the deluxes, I think the price on them in some places is like $23, right? So like you're paying, or, you know, do you want to pay seven extra dollars for a figure like this where it has a ton of accessories and parts count? Yeah, I think that's the thing. Because, like, I did. I expected the same. Because my job, whenever we review a first-party figure, is to complain about it while these two really like it. And I tried to find, you know, gaps and problems with this guy. And the worst thing I can say, well, I guess there's two things I can say that I don't like about his robot mode. One is that his feet are very thin pieces. It looks just a little bit strange. It's not a big deal. It's a tiny deal. I don't actually care. It's just, it's a little odd for them to be so thin. They're thin like RC's feet are thin. It's a little odd. And then the second one, it's mostly a joke, but he literally doesn't have a butt. <laughs> it really cracks me up. It's just like there's there's just uh, like Anna and a robot butt. You could you could get a butt expansion piece to put there. There's like a little port for it and everything. It's perfect. <laughs> Those are just a humor Christian Ran space. Ran humor. Randall says that it's pronounced deluxe plus. It's like it's I almost feel like that would be wrong because Legends Plus means a little bit bigger than Legends. In this case, we mean a little bit better than Deluxe, not a little bit bigger because he's really a Deluxe figure. I don't see where the the feet really feel thin to me. I don't know. Christian, what do you I, think? I don't... <clears throat> okay, then. I mean, I, I guess. Most of have relatively thick feet. I don't know. Right, it's but then like, I feel like you're going to complain that, like, Jazz's feet are too big, so... Lucas, I said I was looking for problems. I was digging. Digging <laughs> oh, deep. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't I have gotcha. problems with this figure that actually oh, bother God. me. The only the thing about is my guy. toy... Yeah, the, the head sculpt is great. Like, mm -hmm. we'll both show it off. I'm going to actually flip my visor down because I love the visor on this thing. I mean, that's the thing. It, it does all the things. Right. Yeah, so, you know, he has... Honestly, like, I've seen this visor mode on, you know, the MP and on um, Hoodlum and on a lot of toys at this point. And I think this one is the visor best. Like, that visor just looks really good on him. Oh, it I looks coherent. It doesn't break up the head at all. It looks really good. It's a nice blue... It, it obscures his eyes just enough to give him kind of a visor moment. And it's cool. Like, I really like that visor look on him. But, I mean, I just feel like, again, it's like the chest. The, the chest on him where, I mean, they didn't have to add this extra little piece down here to make it look accurate, you know, but they did. Like, I mean, that just, like, looks so good down there, that premium. I mean, his chest just looks amazing. I realize it's a it's a faux chest, but, you know, whatever. And it does the thing with the saw blades. It does the thing with the little, like, oil deal, you know, like, or, you know, the hands flip around. I mean... Blowtorch. Blowtorch. Blowtorch, yeah. Yeah, sorry. He's got a saw blade port hole. And then again, the hands are articulated, which I know, Anna, that's always very important to Oh, you. it's always important to me. The hands, you know, the wrist swivel, and then also the hands open. And I want to say that the hand opening is actually, like, it's pointless. It's just for aesthetics because the guns actually peg in to the shaped part of the hand um, so it's not actually close and open the hand anna it's not pointless there's an accessory that utilizes the hands opening and closing uh is there yes are we getting to that or do we do we want to talk about that now do it, Lucas. Uh, do it. oh the so, matrix, right. so i was <laughs> gonna say there, there's a thing i don't know if you know but in the movie um, i forgot to even have this thing <laughs> 
like so, matrices. So I don't know if you know, but like uh, Hot Rod turns into Rodimus Prime in the movie. Spoiler, <laughs> dude. <laughs> But yeah. strengths since we started 35 year old spoilers joke fun ha <laughs> ha uh. but yeah see he can hold the matrix because of the way his hands are which is yeah. like 100% better than the original masterpiece look at that this is the blast effect I like by the way this is the one blast effect I have yeah, I ever like liked exploding matrix. <laughs> I actually like exploding matrix that's good I think it's fun it's I just need the new Rodimus to stand behind him, and then it will be amazing. Yeah, that would be really cool. Light our darkest hour. God, I love this. Uh, Every time I look at it like this, it's, you know, there's Stan Bush in the background. It's a good little Matrix. It, it does its job. It's the same Matrix from the Optimus mold. Yeah. Is it? Yes. I didn't actually check that. Nice. So you can just shove a bunch in your Optimus' chest. Just box of matrices. No, that it works that way. You won't bet it. You can shove it in Hot Rod's chest. It. I haven't done it yet. Lucas, did you actually do it? I have not done it yet. I just saw somebody else it. It Yeah, like it, it, it just board. fits in the very bottom. Okay, cool. It's not. I don't feel like it's an official spot. but. Yeah, so he has a matrix. He can hold it, which is cool. Um, but I, I do... What I was trying to say about the hands, I like the fact that the fingers aren't required to hold them to the guns. Because with a lot of older and third-party MP figures, you're kind of relying on the tension of posable fingers to hold the gun in place. And once your toy starts to age by a couple years and those fingers get loose, it suddenly starts to have, or sometimes by a couple of minutes, just depending on how all the hands constructed, it starts to have trouble holding the gun. He's not going to have that because he actually has most of the sculpted port still in his hand in addition to the moving fingers, which I think is a great choice. They did that with the Optimus as well. I just think that's the way you should do these kind of hands. Yes. It's good. I was happy with it. <clears throat> that's nice. Um, also, you can um, you can flip his other hand around to make his little tool torchy do hick a doodle. Yeah, yeah I was trying to do Okay, good. He does come with his two guns. They are different, just like they should be. Yep. Do, 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 do. The mismatch guns that have been pissing me off for years. They're great. <laughs> The way it works. I know. It's fine. They look good. And like I showed off earlier, he can still hold Firebolt or any 5mm accessory that she would like. But I, I was going to say, too, I mean, here's he, here he is versus the Power of the Primes one. And, I mean, it's just the evolution is... I mean, I, I thought that this one was fine. I still don't mind it. You know, but I mean, this is just, just blows it away. It's totally fine. And I think that's something, I believe I said that on one of our shows recently, is that these toys have actually been good for a long time now. You know, since Combiner Wars, we've been getting good toys every year um, pretty reliably. It's just, you know, they keep getting better. So that toy was fine. The combined mode, the Rodimus mode was a little, uh, it had some issues. But I think, again, like, I mean, th this is the thing where it's like you want updated version of all these figures because, like, you know, this thing had, like, the hood just kind of hanging down. It the There was no articulation in the ankles. I mean, I guess there was due to transformation front and back, but there was no side to side. There was no waist swivel, like all those things, you know, that, that you want. And it also just looks a little bit funky, you know. I mean, it just... Like, it's, again, it's fine. If this is the only thing we had, I, I'm happy with it, I guess. But, I mean, it's just, the new one just comp just blows it away just so much. Where Yeah. The stuff I've been saying about Earthrise and Getting Kingdom lately, you know how I don't need new versions of things anymore? I don't need another Hot Rod. Yep. If they wanted to do this one in, you know, Target Master color, toy colors with the Target Master... That would be cool because you can see he's got the detailing to put in his toy sticker paint apps here or decals or whatever they want to do. So, I mean, that, that's an option for a repaint down the road. And I'd probably buy that because I'm a huge Hot Rod fan. But beyond that, I don't I don't need any more Hot Rods. This is 
perfect to me. I, honest to goodness, like this more. I haven't compared them side by side yet, but I enjoy it more as a toy, as a product, as a figure, as a thing I own than the MB version. Um, I'm not saying it's better than the MP. I'm not saying it, you know, looks better aesthetically or anything like that. I'm saying that it is a more fun product for me to own um, out of the two. Like, the MP is a really good toy. It transforms well. It looks good in both modes. It doesn't quite look as much like G1 Hot Rod as this guy does, which is really kind of a funny thing. Like, even though it look, it's a better looking robot because it's an MP quality figure, it, this guy looks more like G1 Hot Rod, which is fun. But this is just a more fun product for me to own. So honestly, which one I keep is going to be which set I can make better. If I can make an MP set of everybody look better, I'll stick with that. But if I can end up making a generation set look better to me, I'll end up going with it. So this guy is just really cool to me. Oh, That's yeah. James was mentioning he did he posted pictures of of uh, eighty six hot rod with the matrix in his chest. So thank you, James. Yeah, we appreciate that. Yeah, but yeah, no, I I mean honestly, and I know like I always mess around with Rob and in whatever about like that. Oh, this is just as good as the masterpiece and whatever. I think that legitimately this is the one figure where you could actually say that this is better than the masterpiece. Just because In of the, the transformation and the updated engineering and all that kind of thing. Like, I'm sure that there's going to be a masterpiece version come out here in a couple of years that will be even better than this one. But, I mean, it's, you know, like it's darn near perfect. I don't think we actually need a new masterpiece hot rod. I think we just need a masterpiece Rodimus. Yes. I have a crazy thing to say. And you guys yes. are going to call me crazy, and that's fine. But this color of red, I'm noticing that when I put it in different like poses and it makes different shadows across the figure, that red almost fades into the magenta y color that he actually is in the movie. But that's that's good. Guys, or is it just me wishing that it was magenta? I don't notice it, but I'm glad that it does. But, I, I mean, I think, again, I think that this is probably about the right color of red. Like, it's not it's not too magenta. It's not too, like, red. Think, like, the, the Titans Return one was I think this is the right middle way, ground between yes. people who like magenta hot rod and people who like red hot rod. Yeah. That this was, is uh, exactly in the middle of those. And I'm guessing, depending on light, it looks like either one. That was the point I was trying to make. Because the Titans Return oh. one just looked like it was way too Blindingly red. Blindingly red. Yeah. Yes, and the uh, red. red. The Takara one, I think, was a little bit better, but so. And I guess the original classics was very magenta. It was like man, I barely even remember that thing. Red, it was metallic. That was cool. I did not like that guy. I don't. Know, I don't know. I loved it for the time. Yeah, at the time, I, I was too. okay with it. And you, know, I would take a sideburn out of this mold as well. Or a black Rodimus, I'd buy them all. Any yes. repaint they wanted to do of this, I would buy. This figure is incredible. It's really good. We're really we're good. the wrong market though, Christian, because I feel like I, any any repaint of any mold that they do, it's like side. Listen, Here, uh -huh. I would not <laughs> buy this repaint for this mold. This is the most no, I've ever meant it. Okay. No <laughs> I can think of that I have to have that would share a mold with Hot Rod. If I end up collecting everything shattered glass and they make a shattered glass version of him, I might go ahead and get it. But that would really be it. Ooh, so good. <laughs> I, Ooh, I imagine. So good. I think we're going to get a lot of shattered glass milking, which is fine because it's a good milking. The, I do want to mention before we finish up that the only legitimate concern I have with this figure is something that no one else has reported that I've heard of that I have that my shoulders are hellishly tight like rotating these shoulders to get him to face forward every time i rotate him i feel like i'm gonna break it our very own sergio has reported a solution for that sort of thing just this week okay there's a product called hobby grease and i'm sure if you ask him he'll tell you which one he used specifically but he used that in the joints of his mp44 when it broke and it has freed it up quite a bit 
okay, I'm going to try something like that just because I, it just like, you know, there's that feeling you've had before when you bit something and it broke, right? Like when the mm-hmm. peg is about to break and it's bending wrong and you know, it's not rotating like it's supposed to. I get that feeling every time I move his shoulders. I want to play with this toy. Like I want to pose him. I want to make him do silly things. I want to make him play with my other toys, but I'm afraid to because I just don't want to break the arms. I mean, okay, he's only a $30 toy, but for God's sakes, you don't want to break it. Right. Yeah, what what is that like, the silicone? Is that what it is? I, I think it's a silicone-based thing. I, I would have to yeah. ask him to be sure. He just showed me the yeah. tube of it and said, this stuff is incredible, and I was like, great. And I filed that in my head for later. Well, good. I need It needs a little help for me because I want it to be able to move better. Anna also probably still needs future from like 10 years ago. I have it. I just haven't tried to use it yet. When did you oh. get it? Wow, oh, like look at you. Six months ago? You never told us. I got look it. Look at you. Because right. he was like, I don't think that's the right kind of product for our floors, Anna. I, he really should have like checked first or like, do you want to wax the floors? What are we going to do? And I was like, no, it's for my toys. And he just shook his you, head and walked away. You, you could put it on your floors, I'm sure, too. Yeah. We couldn't figure out if we actually should because we have a fake wood floor, but... I think it would work fine on that. I think so. I'm not really sure. I don't see why not. So you're willing to put it on your toys, but not on your floors? Well, yeah, because that's a lot of effort. I don't wax my floor. It's not really wax. It's like, I don't know, Polish. polish. Well, I'm not having tea parties with the queen anytime soon, so I don't need my floor to shine perfectly. All right. Anyway, um, just to, to cap off my experience with this toy, it is January right now as we're recording this. This is a very strong candidate for figure of the year for me. I think the thing that's really hard is, is like, and again, all of these like, Studio Series slash, like, some of the Kingdom ones. Like, the Cyclonus is really, really... Like, I would I would rate this above Cyclonus, but it's close. Mm-hmm. I also really like a lot of the other Studio Series, and I've heard the Grimlock's really good, too. So, like, I think that there's a lot of... A, a lot of that. that I, I'm really curious, like, as the year goes on, you know, because this is January, right? Like, you know, next fall... Like when we're putting together our like top of twenty twenty one list, right. like will these be still on the top? Will, I don't know. We'll see. Will Rodimus blow it out? Will Mister Ark blow it out? You no, know, we will see. We still have a Unicron coming too. That's true. At least I just I remember that my Cyclonus was close, so they can post together to give you an idea of the actual size of this Voyager hot rod. He is small. He's small. You know. If you're concerned about the size, there's nothing that we can say that will break you from that. Yeah, he's Other small. than, I mean, I would just say, you know, get get over it, please. He's as complex as any Voyager, and it would be well worth your time to pick him up. I think it's probably I mean, time we walked away from size class equals size of the figure. Yeah, I think so too, because you're just, like, like Lucas said, in certain markets, the toys, the deluxes are supposed to be $23 now. So do you, will you pay $7 to have no gaps, rotating wrist, moving hands, a good deal of accessories, a head that actually changes between the two modes he's famous for? Will you do that extra $7 to get all the paint that you need and everything? And hell yeah, I definitely will. Like a little bit of a markup like that is definitely worth it. I, I feel like it's the question is like I I want to be to the point where it's like I want to just have like perfect toys on my shelf and I don't want to have to keep replacing it and so that's the same thing with like the shockwave or whatever right like it's not a leader class toy but it's like probably the last shockwave that I'll ever buy you know I don't want to say that because I'm sure that God I I I did this with Siege and and. Uh, Earthrise, where I rebought all the crap, but like I, again, like I would rather pay for a nicer figure. Like I don't care that it's, you know, whatever half an inch shorter than a Voyager or whatever. But I, I do we agree. We forgot to show one thing off. We 
forgot. Oh, we right. forgot. Like oh, all the back scary are... stuff, oh, he yeah. comes with a backdrop. And these are really cool because they are just animated animation cells from the movie. I think this looks better than the normal Studio Series ones for the live action ones because those look kind of dead when they're not moving, the scenes. And this is clearly animation, so it looks like animation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a good effect. That's a good point. You just told me that I could have had him standing on that the whole time instead of this random toy box. Because I have it. like It it would be blocking your face like this. Oh, but that's great. I'm so shy. It is so much better. So this one's the inside of Unicron when he ignites the Matrix, so... If you want to have that scene, you can do it. It's awesome. I have no idea what's showing in my camera right now or what's happening. It's the, it's the top of your head. Perfect. Okay, I, I typically toss out my Studio Series backdrops because I don't like them. Uh, these I will keep. Yeah, these are cool. I think these are going to clog up my room pretty bad. Yep. Yeah. That's okay. It's fine. So yeah, he's a strong recommend from all of us, it seems, right? Very strong. Um, he does come, Catherine asks if he comes with the Matrix. He does come with a Matrix, yes. That's yes. one of his accessories. Yeah. Christian wasn't saying does... that it was the one from Optimus. He was just saying that it's the same it's piece the same of plastic. Mold. Yeah. Yeah. And it does come apart <laughs> from the explodey effect. Yes. A different piece. Put the effect on or take it off. Don't need it, probably. And we didn't. Did we show off the little flame effects that you can oh, attach to the tailpipes? Yeah, those go on the end of the tailpipes. Or I guess you can put those on the. You can put those in the guns too, right? I think. Yeah. Or you could do. You could put them on his arms. Sure. In robot mode. Yeah, Pew And his little laser hand. Cut. Burn fades. <laughs> So yeah, Krabby comes with, he comes with his two guns, the saw blade, two of these tailpipe effects, a matrix, and the matrix explodey effect. Matrix explode. So fair amount of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, he comes with a good amount of accessories. He's very complicated as far as like complexity for a deluxe figure, and he's gapless and has all the articulation you want, so you know. No complaints. Yes, go get him. Go get him right now. I was gonna say, is he the is he the same size as Ironhide? Or is he shorter than Ironhide? Not he. I'm bringing my Ironhide in. I guess he is shorter than Ironhide. I well, if you don't that. count the tail pipes or whatever, so right. Yeah, someone said that, you know, Hot Rod is small, and I mean, the thing is, Hot Rod is small. He's not a, like, huge character, so it's good for him to be the size. Yes, he is an appropriate size. Book Club this week is More Than Meets the Eye, issues 17 through 19. You guys are getting dangerously close to Dark Cybertron. We are. I don't know what we'll do when Dark Cybertron comes. Yeah, I don't think Dark Cybertron is that bad. Everyone's like, oh, it's the worst thing. You know what the worst thing is? The new series. Oh, come <laughs> on. The new series is pretty bad. See, that's what I was going to yeah. say. Instead of Dark Cybertron, we should start reading the new series because that would be so much happier. Like, no. Relevance. Relevance. I mean, I suppose, like, the new series is good because since nothing happens. Like, you could read through it really quick, I guess. I do you like know. speed of reading? I go slower. Because I keep falling asleep. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Don't read it. But do go to Book Club and read more than meets the eye. Issue 17 through 19. That's yes. Remain in Light. Very good story. So, and uh, last night uh, was, it was pre-record and we did that so we could have Rob on uh, to talk about the top masterpiece and third party figures of the year of 2020. 
Um, but uh, we went rather long, so that was a it was like over two hour show. Uh, so uh-huh. that was that that was lots of fun though. Um, so check that out. Um, and then I believe there should be an oof uh, tomorrow night. So we're trying to get some cast together because. I, I feel like I've already shown off like all the stuff, you know, I've gotten like a ridiculous amount of stuff, but I've shown hey, everything off. If the post off, office so. cooperates, you'll see me tomorrow. And if they don't, you won't. Yeah. I want to go, but I have to be a professor. Uh, yeah. I'd be able to so. this. See? Anyway. Um, so yeah. So I think that's pretty much it. Um, anything else? Says hi. So yeah, so thanks everyone for joining. Thanks to Jason, Randall, Catherine, um, James. Who am I missing? Do I miss anyone? I nodded but, at Catherine's question because it was very useful for me to nod, considering the delay. But but yes, uh, the the glyph does transform. I think yeah, it's based on the tour world. Yeah. So. We will be blue version. It was just out because of the the greatest show or whatever we call it, the best of the year. This was one of my favorite things I bought, even though it's old. Yay! There you go. Hey, I made you buy that. Yay! You did. I'm so happy. There you go. Well, thanks everyone, and we will see you next week. See you next week. Bye.